You've seen how you can schedule a Microsoft Teams meeting, whether it be directly from the Microsoft Teams app or within a familiar Outlook experience. If you're on the go, you could schedule it from your mobile, again, from an app such as Outlook or Microsoft Teams. But which tool should you use? What are your needs? So I'm gonna go over a few different conclusions as we had compared in our previous video about how we can schedule a Microsoft Teams meeting. First of all, we could look at the, the Microsoft Teams app itself and you can see that the most common needs for scheduling a meeting are there within the app. Give it a title, invite some people, make some people optional, you can set the time, put a description. Um, so various different things there and you can see that once you've finished uh, scheduling the meeting, then you will see the, the Teams meeting details in the invite itself. But what if you need to present other things within the, uh, the meeting invite. Let's say that you needed to attach something to the invite. We saw that we couldn't quite do that in an elegant fashion. Uh, we had to copy over a, a hyperlink. What if we wanted to have um, some different formatting within the, the invitation as well? So I know that's not really um, often done, but uh, within the, uh, the Outlook space, we can get a full experience of of presenting all sorts of formatting, even down to the point where we're creating the meeting invite within Word itself to give us a full experience of formatting. Within Outlook, sometimes we manage multiple calendars, uh, whether we are delegated access to someone's calendar or we've got group calendars that we can manage. So we need to see those sometimes as we're planning the events or the meeting itself. And within Outlook, we can see this, we can overlay and layer these things and plan based on the availability across multiple calendars. But we can't do that yet within Microsoft Teams. Now, while Microsoft Teams allows you to invite multiple people uh, to a, um, a meeting, and it now has, has the, the scheduling assistant where you have a familiar uh, bar graph and you can track down and see where that gap's going to be um, that's gonna be convenient for us. I also like how Teams has a, a quick way of choosing a suggestion. It will have a couple of times that it's found that are common and free across the people that you have invited to this meeting. But what it is lacking is the ability to, um, to see within a group if you are inviting that group. Now, we can add a, a team name or a group name to a Microsoft Teams meeting and that will invite all the members of the group. But if it's a medium-sized group, uh, maybe it's just a group of sort of eight to 10 people, there might be a need to expand that group and just check quickly the availability across the whole group. Now, the scheduling assistant won't do that within Microsoft Teams. In fact, even within Outlook, you have to expand the group and then you can see and, and judge the availability of all the people that are within that group. Is there a need to add an email signature? Sometimes you do need to have some of your contact details there and there is no opportunity to add an email signature within Microsoft Teams, but you can add it with an Outlook. So do keep that in mind if you need to add those details. Now one thing that is an advantage um, is if you have got into using channel meetings within Microsoft Teams. It's a great way to ensure that the meeting is available for all Teams members and that it keeps the meeting history, whether it be activity before, during or after, in the whole conversation thread. We can't yet do that in Outlook. We can book standalone meetings, as I call them, where they will, uh, you'll attend that meeting and you can see the, the history and go back to that meeting within the chat app of Microsoft Teams. But you can't book or schedule channel meetings with an Outlook. So if that is something that you want to make use of, then you'll be doing that within the Microsoft Teams app. Thankfully, you can do that with the desktop Microsoft Teams app. You can do it from the web, of course, because it's <laughs> pretty much the same. And you can do it from the mobile app. If you have a need to organize things using color coding, the Microsoft Teams experience for booking meetings is pretty much Teams purple, <laughs> you don't have that color coding. And this is where if you are used to that Outlook experience and you're using color coding for different events to try and categorize things, um, and even across the different calendars that might be different 
uh, colors that you're managing, um, then that's an option that you'll probably be choosing Outlook rather than scheduling that meeting within Microsoft Teams. And when it comes to personal productivity, sometimes the meetings and, and appointments that we're booking are to block out time for personal task management. And we're putting things in our calendar to make sure that one, people know that we're unavailable because we're working on something, and two, it's a nice reminder for ourselves to um, keep that appointment with ourselves and set that time aside for tasks. Now, if you need that experience of being able to schedule a meeting for micro with Microsoft Teams, um, and you're inviting people to it, but you also want to see and and organize some of your tasks over the top of that, then you'll be doing it with an Outlook. Within Microsoft Teams, task management is possible, but it is a separate application. Uh, and it could be within Planner, or it could be within the Tasks app that you can add on the bar. There isn't that unified experience as yet for managing tasks and scheduling meetings all in a, a singular calendar view within Microsoft Teams. So if I wrap that up, um, it's really about finding uh, and understanding the needs that you have for scheduling that meeting. If it's something that you just need to quickly get out there and you've got a good understanding between yourself and the other parties and they don't need to see a signature and um, we're going to share the, the attachments in another way or, or we'll schedule it, we'll share them within the meeting, then maybe you don't need all of those additional features. You don't need formatting. You don't need to manage multiple calendars. Then great, you could do it within Microsoft Teams or within Outlook. So it's about understanding your needs. But the other thing that I'd say too, just as we finish off, is that where do we receive these meeting invites? Wherever we're creating them, we're still receiving them within Outlook. They still come to email. As yet, there isn't a place within Microsoft Teams where we can receive a meeting invite where we have been looped in. Sure, we can at mention some people within a post and say, hey, at team, hey, at channel, or hey, at tag, um, come along to this meeting but we don't receive it into an inbox and uh, along with other meeting invites. So perhaps if you are used to um, scheduling and managing your time and receiving meetings within, the, uh, within Outlook and within your inbox, then you're probably gonna continue to do it from there. But if you find that quick, convenient way of starting up a, a meeting within Microsoft Teams, scheduling it on the go and, uh, and just getting that time uh, quickly booked and scheduled, then do it within Microsoft Teams, and I'm sure that space is going to develop further as we start to see more features and functionality come into Teams to be able to manage our time. So if you found this useful, then do subscribe to my channel. Um, continue to, to check out some of the content that I'm creating around modern workplace scenarios, the way that we work within a modern workplace, the moment I'm really focusing on uh, time management and trying to help us remain engaged as, as many of us are now working remotely from our homes and from different places. But do keep up with the content and let me know if there's something that you'd like me to cover. Uh, and uh, I'm trying to also split out these videos to the how to's and why. And this has been one of my why videos, giving you my 10 cents. So check it out and um, we'll see you again next time. Bye for now.